Jess is sitting on her own in a country pub. Not like her to be short of male attention and having to buy her own drinks. Actually, she's here waiting for this guy, the Mark. Clutching a big wedge of money, Jess is going to take him for the test drive. Hi. Hi, Alice. You want to Hello. Hi, I'm Susie. You right, love? Okay. Nice to meet you. The Mark has made an appointment to see a classic car that Jess is selling. And being the law-abiding citizen she is, she first makes sure that his licence is in order. Right, I need to check your points. How many you got? I mean, how many points? Oh, lovely. Well done. Formalities out of the way, it's time to look at the car. There it is, under a rain cover. Yeah. <laughs> Can you give me an hand to take this off? The 1971 MGB sports car is in excellent nick. Thank you. Just want to shove that in, yeah, just in the back there. It's open. Finally, the test drive. I took someone on a little drive early and we just literally... Do you know how to get onto the... The Mark's road? chomping at the bit to take this little beauty for a spin. I've only had it since last summer. My boyfriend bought it for me. So I've driven it, you know, bits and bobs, but not a lot. The test drive is over and everything seems to have gone well. So it looks like they've reserved me a little spot or something, doesn't it? Perfect. Right. Wicked. Still worried about the rain, Jess insists on putting the canvas cover back on the car. Can you help me with this cover again? Uh -huh. It's because I don't know what the weather's like in Scotland. Mm. And until it's sold, I just want to make sure it's... it stays perfect. Finally, they go back inside to discuss the deal. How was that? Yeah. Is that OK? Yeah. Right. I've got to go. Here's the keys. I've got all this paperwork for you now. This is the MOT certificate. Uh, this is all the service history. This is like everything you could possibly need to know about the car. That's everything that's happened in the past, all papers. Anything to do with the car is in this folder. Jess has certainly got all her paperwork in order. The mark can rest assured the car's been well looked after. Just one thing left to do. And that's pay for it. You've got like a whole year on that. Um, that's a little invoice. Do, are you going to pay now? Yeah. There goes that wedge of cash. Right. Are you going to count this out in front of me so yeah, I don't have to do it? Right. The Mark's paying £1,800, and at that price, the vintage sports car is an absolute steal. This is good, I don't have to do I hate counting the nails. Let's do with these nails. Right, are you happy with everything? Have you got any questions? If there's anything you need to know, just give me a ring. It's yours, I'll pop that in there for you. Your keys. OK? I'm going to shoot. Is everything OK, yeah? Yeah, OK, have a great day, boys. Like I said, any problems, just give me a call, yeah? See you later. He's got the keys and all the paperwork. Of course, he wants to take another look at that beautiful classic car. That's not what you were driving, was it? In a matter of minutes, the car has turned from a well-preserved classic into a crappy old rust bucket. So what really happened? There wasn't one car, but two, both with the same plates. Once the hustlers had found the old banger, they bought an identical car in good nick. 
It's an MG. It's the same make, yeah? yeah perfect. Oh, brilliant. Back of the net. It was no accident that there were traffic cones in the car park. Like they preserved me a little spot or something, didn't it? They'd been left there to make sure the spaces around the car were kept clear. Okay. Right. Are you going to cut us out in front of me? So yeah, I don't have to right. do it. And Jess wasn't working alone. There were plenty of hustlers at work here today. Paul got into the hustle van, and as soon as the mark was distracted with the paperwork, he pulled the van in front of the window, blocking the view. The lemon was in the car park the whole time. Alex and Jazz just pushed it into place next to the sports car. Okay, whoa, 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 whoa. Your keys. And that rain cover meant the mark wasn't able to tell the difference until it was too late. I'm going to shoot. Is everything okay? Yeah. Okay. Have a great day, boys. The two vehicles drove off in perfect synchronisation, making the switch completely invisible from inside the pub. And off they drove, with the sports car and the money, stopping only to pick Jess up round the back. This is a classic bait and switch scam. The mark thinks they're buying a good car, but end up driving home a lemon. Now we've made the differences between the two cars immediately obvious, but when the scam happens for real, you may not know that the car you now own is not the one you took for a test drive. It may be unsafe to drive, and you could end up paying with your life. Don't let the seller leave until you've taken full possession of whatever you're buying. And don't carry out the transaction in some random pub in the middle of nowhere. Instead, go to the seller's home or place of business. That way, if there's a problem, you know where to find them.